What is up you guys, I'm Just Green, and as you can probably see right beside me, I have the all new 2022 Kia Sorento Hybrid. And if you're in the market for a stylish, fuel efficient commuter car and need the space of an SUV, is the all new 2022 Kia Sorento Hybrid the one you should be looking at? That's what we'll find out. So if you guys have been following Kia for the past couple of years, some of you might already know that Kia has totally redesigned the Sorento for the 2021 model year and gave it a more rugged appearance. So when Kia originally redesigned the Sorento for the 2021 model year, I think it's safe to say that the new redesign had definitely caught the eye of many people, including myself, and that gave them a totally different perception to the Kia brand. And I think that it's arguable that they changed people's perception of the brand many years ago with their other vehicles. But in my opinion, I think they took it to a whole new level, especially with this Kia Sorento hybrid model that I have in front of me. And now I first want to start out with the trim levels for this 20 2022 Kia Sorento hybrid so this is a little bit different from the gas Sorento so my particular model is the S which has an MSRP of 34,090 and then you can also get an EX which has an MSRP of 36,090 Starting off at the front, you can see Kia has revamped the Tiger Nose grill versus the previous design, Sorento. You can see there's this rough texture in the grill. I think it makes it look more rugged than before versus the softer, more bubbly look of the previous design. Not to say that the previous design was lacking, but this definitely takes it a step further. Also new for this year, you've got the new corporate Kia logo, unlike last year's model. And then coming to the headlights, they are multi-reflector LED with high beam assist, auto light control, and LED daytime running lights. And all of these features are standard across both of the trim levels for the hybrid. No LED headlights are available on this particular model. These are just standard incandescent bulbs. You would have to go with the EX trim level for that. And down here is what looks like two extra cutouts for airflow. I'm assuming these are part of the grill. And you can see those are also finished with the black accenting, which I think definitely helps give this vehicle a more rugged appearance. And I think the blacked out accenting definitely contrasts well with this beautiful snow white pearl paint that we have on board. And as you can see on the side, you do have functional air vents. And I really like the way this looks. This reminds me of the Kia Soul. So I really like what Kia has done here in the front end. I think they really nailed it here. Now coming to the side profile of the Kia Sorento Hybrid, I have to say they took a little bit of inspiration from their volume seller, which is of course the Kia Telluride. Up top you will find these silver roof rails. Now I think they should have blacked these out to match the other blacked out accents on the vehicle. And then below that you will find chrome accents on the windows. And then coming towards the back you can see that it's partially blacked out to kind of give it that floating roof look, which I like. And then coming down to the mirrors, they are power adjustable and heated. And you have the black accenting which is nice they've got led turn signals built in and these features are standard on both the s and the ex trim levels coming down to the wheels these are 17 inch aero wheels at least that's what kia calls them if you went for the ex trim level you could also get 19 inch machine finished alloy wheels these wheels also have a four wheel disc braking system with abs that stands for anti-lock braking system so overall i think these are really nice looking wheels and they definitely suit the design of the vehicle well. At the bottom of the vehicle you have some black accenting along with some chrome trim which I think is a nice touch. Now as for the gas cap it is a push button so you just push on the door to open it and close it. As for the fuel capacity it can hold up to 17.7 gallons of fuel to power our gas engine which I'll talk about later. Coming to the back of the Sorento Hybrid, you can see it looks pretty much like every other Sorento you've seen, but there is one minor difference that I will point out later. So starting up top, the rear window wiper is nicely tucked in, which gives the rear window a nice clean look. And I believe Kia is one of the only ones that offer that in this segment. Hyundai doesn't even hide the rear wiper on the Santa Fe, so this is definitely nice to see. And coming to the taillights, they aren't LED sadly. I believe they're just incandescent bulbs, so I would really like to see them make this LED just to make it feel more upscale. So a little disappointing in my opinion, but I can live without it. 
Next, you'll find our new Kia logo, which again looks really nice. And then below that, you also have the backup camera with the parking sensor. Coming down below that, you can see that we have Sorrento spilled out across the back, which is something a lot of new cars are doing. The Hyundai Santa Fe doesn't do this. And then coming over here, this is how you can tell you have the hybrid model. So this is the hybrid badge, which says Eco Hybrid. I wish they just made this a little bit bigger because as you guys have seen earlier, it was pretty unnoticeable when I was standing farther away from the vehicle. And now coming to the bottom, we have this black accent going across. And then below that, you do have fake exhaust tips. Sadly, I believe the actual exhaust tips are located below the vehicle. But I do like this silver outlining around the fake exhaust tips. And interestingly, the reverse lights are built in here rather than the actual tail lights themselves. So definitely an interesting design choice. I personally am not a fan of it myself. So now I want to show you guys what is powering this 2022 Kia Sorento hybrid model. And this is definitely interesting because this being a hybrid vehicle means that not only is this a gas powered engine powering this thing, but you also have some electric motors driving the vehicle when it makes the most sense to do so. So when you open the hood, you'll notice that it is held up by struts. And then what you'll find under the hood of the Sorento hybrid is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four, which is of course also paired with that parallel hybrid system that houses the electric motors and this hybrid powertrain combined puts out about 227 horsepower with 258 pound-feet of torque and as far as the transmission this powertrain is mated to a six-speed automatic and as for the drivetrain you get front-wheel drive standard but you can also get the Sorento hybrid and all-wheel drive across both trim levels and as this one sits for the towing capability it can tow up to 2,000 pounds and now let's talk fuel economy so because we have two different drivetrains for the Sorento hybrid Hybrid. The numbers are going to be slightly different depending on which version you opt for. So for front wheel drive, this is rated to score 39 in the city, 35 on the highway, and 37 combined. And as far as all wheel drive, this is rated to score about 5% less for the combined MPG of the front wheel drive setup. So you can expect 36 in the city, 33 on the highway, and 35 combined. And again, that's if you opt for the all wheel drive version. So overall, very healthy numbers here. And this Sorrento hybrid is just a little bit better than the Santa Fe hybrid as far as fuel economy goes. So just keep that in mind. Now coming to the tailgate of the Sorrento Hybrid, to open it, you just find the button under the Sorrento badge to open it. And by the way, this is not power lifting, so this is only a manual operated tailgate, and it only becomes a power tailgate if you opt for the EX trim level. But anyways, once you open the tailgate of the Sorrento Hybrid, as you can see, mine came with some nice floor mats, but as far as the cargo room back here, it's rated at 16 cubic feet behind the third row, if you fold that down, it expands to about 45 cubic feet. And if you fold the second row, it maxes out at about 76 cubic feet of space. This is also bigger than the Hyundai Santa Fe. And when compared to other mid-sized third row offerings in the segment, this is still one of the largest trunk spaces you'll find. And now as I lift up the trunk bed, as you can see, there is no spare tire in here, but you do have some car jacks and some storage compartments, which are not very big. You could probably only fit small tools in here. And I believe here in the middle should be part of the hybrid system that this car has but I'm not too sure. It looks like I could open this but I don't think I'll be able to open it with my bare hands. Now before I get inside this Sorento Hybrid, I want to show you guys the key fob that this vehicle comes with. And as you can see, this is one of their newly designed key fobs, which I'm not really a fan of. And just holding this in my hand, it feels cheaper than the last Hyundai Elantra key fob that I tested. And you can see that all your buttons are now on the side of the key fob, which is definitely an interesting design choice. Now this is really nice from a practicality standpoint, because you're less likely to accidentally press one of these buttons while it's in your pocket or something, as they're just hidden off to the side there. But overall, not too bad of a key fob. I just wish it was as nice as some of the Hyundai key fobs that I tested. But that's no big deal because what's more important is the place that you're going to spend most of your time and that of course is the interior. So now walking up to the Sorrento Hybrid, you can just press the black button on the door handle to lock and unlock the vehicle. It will beep so that's how you know you've unlocked it. Now I first want to bring our attention to the door panel here and right off the bat, the way this door handle is designed really caught my eye when I first saw it. It looks very luxurious. It is just plastic though, which is expected. And I really like this sort of grid pattern texture on the panel behind it. This silver stitching in the middle also looks really nice. And coming below that, you have soft touch material on the armrest with some nice stitching and a little storage compartment here with a grab handle that also has the silver accent lining 
As for the window controls, we have automatic power up and down adjusting for the driver and standard power adjusting for the passengers. Up ahead, we have a control for the power adjusting mirrors, which I'll demonstrate once I get inside the vehicle. And finally, below that, we have a massive storage compartment with some cup holders. You could probably fit some pretty big bugs in here if you wanted to, so that's definitely nice. Now let's talk about the driver's seat, since that's going to be the place where the owner spends most of their time. So it is a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with two-way bar support and this is standard on both trim levels for the hybrid model this is also heated as standard and as you can see this is the black interior with the sort of white stitching going around the seats I think the black looks really nice even though I usually prefer lighter interiors but you can also get this interior in sort of a beige color if you prefer that as well and as for the materials both trim levels are gonna come with leatherette seats as standard and now finally getting into the 2022 Sorento Hybrid. As you can see, the interior remains pretty much the same as it was totally redesigned for last year. And just closing that door there felt pretty solid. And I first want to start off with the mirrors. So as you can see, they are power adjustable like I mentioned earlier. And this feature is standard across both trim levels. And this is definitely something that you can expect on even some base model cars today. So pretty nice feature. Then coming up to the dashboard, it's made of hard touch plastic. We've got two air vents on each side of the vehicle, as well as one in the center, along with the speaker grill. And we'll talk more about our speaker system later when I get to the infotainment. Now let's bring our attention back to the steering wheel. And I want to start up the vehicle so to do that just put your foot on the brake and just find the push to start button right over here now as I started up the vehicle I noticed that there was no vibration from the engine which is weird if you were coming from a traditional gas powered vehicle and that's because usually when you start up a hybrid vehicle it's going to default in EV mode meaning it's only running off the electric motor and battery pack when you're at idle or cruising at a very low speed now occasionally the gas engine will kick back on even when you're not driving the vehicle and that's because it sometimes needs to run to keep that battery pack charged when it starts to run low and I forgot to mention earlier that this vehicle is running off of a 270 volt battery pack. As for our drive modes, we have Eco, Sport, and Smart, and this computer display does react to when you change the drive mode, but it isn't overly as dramatic as some of the Hyundai products I've been in. As you can see, it's just a very basic selector, so no explosive visuals or anything like that, which would have been nice, but it's totally fine. Now I want to demonstrate this cool little animation the computer display makes when you open and close the door. So as you can see, this is what happens when I open the door, and now I'll close it. And there you go. So yeah, I've just found that pretty neat and I thought I'd put that in the review. Now I want to bring our attention back to the steering wheel here. And as you can see, it is leather wrapped with the nice white stitching. It has a great amount of thickness for my hands and it's definitely nice and comfortable to hold. This steering wheel is manually adjustable. No power wheel on the Sorento Hybrid. In the center, we've got our new Kia logo, which still hasn't grown on me personally. I think they should have still kept the black ring around it like in the previous logo, but I do like the new font, however. I just think it looks kind of weird by itself without the ring, but to each their own. And now I'm going to do a horn test. So it's a pretty strong sounding horn. You could easily blow some people out of your way. Coming down here, we have some buttons to control what I assume is the dashboard brightness, the lane keep assist, traction control, and the blink button at the bottom becomes a control for our trunk if you go for the EX trim level. Moving back up, we have some piano black plastic on the gauge cluster, some more hard touch plastic on the upper area here. You've got some manual paddle shifters on the steering wheel and hard touch plastic on this top cover. Up here you have a really nice, almost frameless rear view mirror. Above that is our interior lighting module. And of course we have illuminated sun visors on each side which are detachable. And now let's finally come over to our massive infotainment system. And this is a 10.25 inch display which comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Which is not wireless by the way so I would have liked to seen that. Now I don't have an Android device but I do have an iPhone so I will demonstrate Apple CarPlay in a little bit. But if we take a closer look here you can see there's a ton of different ways to make use of this massive display. So for example, we can use our map slash navigation system. We have a button for the integrated radio, one for our media, which is only going to work if you connect a device via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And I believe USB supported devices will also work with this system. And if you want to go even deeper, 
You can even view the hybrid system for more advanced information. You can also access more settings for your climate control system and much more. So, so far, as you can see, you just have a lot of features in this vehicle to play around with. And that's just totally up to you and your preferences. You've even got a dedicated quiet mode here, so this can be pretty handy for those long road trips. Maybe if you have some family or friends in your Sorento who just want to relax in a relatively quiet environment, but say you still want to listen to your music up front without bothering them too much that's exactly what enabling this quiet mode is going to do now as for our speaker system it's going to be a six speaker system on both trim levels so no sacrifices there now I want to demonstrate Apple CarPlay in the 2022 Sorento Hybrid. As you can see, I have an iPhone 7 here. This of course is going to work on any modern Apple devices that support the latest version of iOS. So all you have to do is connect to your Apple device via USB. And once you do that, you're going to get this pop up on the screen. It will let you know some information that will be shared with your device. We'll just click next and then it'll ask you to enable Siri and then it gives you some more tips to make sure you have a trouble free experience. Just hit OK. Give it a second and you might have to hit phone or media if it doesn't connect right away. And just like that, we're now connected to Apple CarPlay. And with this, we can view our contacts, our recent messages. We could even make and receive phone calls through the system. And to access all of our apps, you can just hit the button on the bottom left. And now we have all of our apps that are supported with Apple CarPlay. You can see swiping here is very smooth and lag free. And I really like how Kia has allowed it to take up the entire display, unlike some other brands which only allow it to take up half of the display. So that's definitely very welcome. Now I'll demonstrate our six speaker audio system that this Sorento hybrid has on board using our Apple CarPlay feature. So it's definitely a great sounding system. I think it's equalized very well in terms of the bass and treble. Overall playback quality sounds nice and crisp and I don't feel like I'm losing any detail like in some other sound systems that I've heard. And now coming down to our climate control, most of your controls are going to be touch buttons which feel really responsive. There's no lag in between presses or anything like that. So they're really solid to use. And it is a dual stone system. It's mostly made of piano black, which is known to get dirty really easily. Coming over to the air vents, I like the silver trim around them. There's also a vent underneath this one, which I think is pretty unusual. Down in the center is a storage compartment for something like a phone. However, there is no wireless charger built into this one, so you must opt for the EX trim level for that feature. But what we do have is three USB ports, one being for your phone protection, and the other two are just for charging. Coming over to the gearbox, we have this dial, which is actually our gear shifter, so there's no stick or anything. You can see we've got park in the center, and if we bump this into reverse, you can see that we have our backup camera on this massive display, so it has things like active trajectory and advanced parking sensors that prevents you from actually bumping into anything. Coming back down, we have heated seats for both the driver and the passenger. This is standard on both trim levels. Coming down to the gearbox, we have our Sorento badge, which I like. We have our drive mode selector, which is also dial operated. Over here, we have our electronic parking brake along with some other gearbox related controls. Coming over to the glove box, it is nicely damped and you have a ton of booklets in here, such as your owner's manual, safety guide, etc. Next, we have two massively sized cup holders. And here we have a large storage area for our center armrest. You could probably fit a ton of coupons in here, which I'd probably just use the glove box if I were you. Coming to the back door panel, as you can see, we have all of the same nice design elements that carry over from the front. And you also have a standard adjustment for the window. And now I'm in the back row of the Sorrento Hybrid, and like I mentioned earlier, these are captain's chairs with 4-way manual adjustment. And as far as legroom back here, it's rated to have 40.7 inches. Now that's less than the Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid. You can see we have back pockets behind the front row seats. The panel is hard touch plastic. We've also got side pockets on our captain's chairs, which is pretty nice. In the center console, we have two air vents, as well as a 12-volt and USB charging port down here. 
Coming down, you'll also notice there is a hump here, but it's not very intrusive like I've seen on some other vehicles. So being a middle passenger shouldn't be too uncomfortable in the Sorento Hybrid. But now I want to find out if I'm uncomfortable in that third row. So to get into the third row, we just need to push these captain's chairs forward by pressing this little button down here. And now as you can see, we have sort of a little entrance to the third row, although it's a pretty tight space to squeeze through, so it is kind of a hassle to get back here. So now I'm in the third row of the Sorento Hybrid, and my initial impressions are that it is really tight back here, legroom wise, at least for me. As far as the legroom, it's only rated at 29.6 inches. Compare that to the seat in front of me, which is rated at 40.7 inches of legroom. And as you can clearly see, my legs are crammed into the seat in front of me, and this isn't even with it all the way back. So if I were to sit back here, I would have to ask this person to scoot up a little, and that would mean that they would have to be just as uncomfortable as I am sitting back here. Because again, this is really uncomfortable for me and I would not want to sit back here on long road trips. I think this is only useful in a pinch, but I definitely wouldn't recommend sitting back here long term. But what the good news is, is that we do have some connectivity back here. So we have USB charging ports on both sides as well as cup holders and this is all hard touch plastic. We've got these tiny little windows back here. Alright, so we're now taking the 2022 Sorento Hybrid out for a spin. And as you can see, we're merging onto the highway here, which will then lead me to talk about how this vehicle performs. So from 0 to 60, this hybrid model is rated at 8.4 seconds. And for reference, that's more than a second slower than the gas Sorento. Granted, that's because this one being a hybrid weighs a little bit more than the gas version with the extra battery pack and hybrid system. So it's a pretty heavy vehicle. It has a curb weight of about 4 tons. and the the gas model weighs about 12% less than this one at about 3.5 tons. So this obviously isn't a very fast vehicle, nor is it very sporty, and that makes sense because it isn't really meant to be any of those things. This is supposed to be more of a gas saver, point A to B type of vehicle, and I think it does really well in that aspect. Again, it's rated at 39 miles per gallon in the city, and 35 on the highway with the front wheel drive setup. And if you opt for all wheel drive, you get a little bit less than that, but it's still efficient in that regard. Now as far as the powertrain, I think this vehicle does a really nice job of knowing when to switch between the electric motor and the gas engine, depending on how hard you push the accelerator or when that battery pack needs to be recharged again. So there's no jerkiness when the engine kicks on, it's just overall a very seamless transition between the electric motor and the gas engine. Now something I found interesting is that whenever you're on the brakes, so say for example maybe you were cruising and you need to slow down, you're actually going to recharge the vehicle every time you press on the brakes. And now that we're cruising on the highway, I want to talk about road noise, so it's actually not too bad. I'd say it's pretty much middle of the pack for the segment. Remember, we're riding on 17 inch wheels with a tire width of 235 and a 65% sidewall. And I think it soaks up bumps really well. And just driving this vehicle, you feel really safe with all of the safety equipment that it comes standard with. So now what I want to do is show you guys how this thing performs when you go full throttle on the gas. So we'll just merge onto the highway here. And we're in eco mode, by the way. So again, like I said, it's not very fast, but it's definitely more than enough power for the average everyday commuter. So I think you get a good balance between performance and fuel efficiency driving the Sorento Hybrid. And this is overall a very comfortable and practical vehicle for families while also being very fuel efficient. And I definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking for an SUV that can do all of those things. So I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the 2022 Kia Sorento Hybrid. And if you made it this far, thank you. I really appreciate you sticking with me until the end. And if you did enjoy the video, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. I would greatly appreciate that. And I certainly hope you guys found this video helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.